Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Integrity Herbicide and Pride Seeds. I'm Kelvin Hepner for Real Agriculture and uh, pleased to be joined once again on uh, the Corn School by Alana Sirhan, market development agronomist with Pride Seeds. And Alana, we're standing in a, a cornfield. It's great to be outside and in person, back in the field, talking about uh, preparation for getting that silage, that corn silage crop off to a great start. Where do we start? I guess soil temperature is probably one of the first things to think about. Yeah, for sure. I mean, as we're starting to really roll into spring here, there's a multitude of different things. Uh, you know, us as agronomists wanted to be talking to growers about um, some things that happen in a lead up to getting out in the field would be first and foremost, that would be hybrid selection. Um, those are things that farmers would have uh, done, you know, last fall or early this spring. Um, and the number one thing that I want to talk to you about that from a silage front is making sure that we're growing multiple hybrids on our farm. At the end of the day, having, you know, two or even three different hybrid silage hybrids on farm really helps spread out our risk. And really it helps with maturity and, you know, things like making sure our, our whole plant moisture is ideal as we go through that silage chopping season. So just a little bit of risk management in that way and a good practice to have for growers. So that's the first thing. Second thing is exactly that we're out here, um, you know, late March, guys are starting to get excited. So when we start to think about that next step is getting into the field, the first thing that comes to mind for me is absolutely soil temperature. Um, you know, as you can see, patches of snow out here still today from our most recent snowfall um, but down underneath you know where is that frost sitting what's that overall soil temperature when we're growing corn we know that corn will not germinate until around 10 degrees celsius okay so that's kind of that magic number we need to be thinking about any earlier than that, that corn is gonna run into a multitude of different problems. That first drink of water that that corn seedling takes in needs to be warm. Okay, we see a lot of, uh, a lot of growers, uh, you know, who jump the gun, um, are eager to get out there. And after those first, you know, week or so of that corn seedling in the ground, if it's gonna imbibe that cold drink of water, we, think, we see things like corkscrewing, you know, we see things like, um, root development forming, um, but no coleoptile, no emergence happening. And that's, uh, that often leads to a replant scenario right away. So using that soil temperature as a way to monitor when things are fit. All right, and bring that soil temperature probe to the field. Exactly, absolutely. I always bring two or more uh, with me. I'm gonna go right at planting depth right at that inch and a half, two inch. Um, and then I'm gonna go as long down, as, as far down as my soil probe will go, as my soil thermometer will go, I'll go right to three and a half, four inches to see how far down uh, that soil temperature is. And again, we have to consider when we're taking that temperature, you know, uh, here in the afternoon, we're at, you know, full high sun. What is that doing to that top level of that soil as opposed to what's gonna be happening where we're gonna be putting that seedling? Okay. Does that make a difference time of day when you're planting? Yes, absolutely. So, you know, depending on what that soil cap, what that soil top is like, and depending on what we're planting into it, you know, this morning we wake up to, you know, a minus four, um, where that soil has had an opportunity to warm up here now today by around 1.30. Um, you know, thinking about those highs and lows, peaks and valleys of temperature is crucial uh, when we're thinking about when to plant, how deep to plant, etc. All right, so that's temperature where the seeds going in the ground what about above the ground trying to get that seed in the in in that proper place where it's supposed to go in the seed yeah room. absolutely and so this field is a great example of that and a lot of our silage producers are, are growing in situations where it may be corn for one or two years and obviously rotation is crucial but when we are in a scenario when we have to grow corn on corn we want to think about seed bed prep soil prep um, and the number one biggest thing to control our, our trash, our corn trash out in the field, is our trash whippers, our row cleaners. You know, anyone who is, you know, planting into corn on corn or areas of, of heavy trash, maybe you broke up some hay land the previous year, whatever the scenario is, trash whippers are your friend. Okay, and not only just having them on your planter because they look awesome, okay, making sure they're set properly, right? We want those tines doing the work when there's debris in the way, 
okay? And we don't need them spinning all of the time, right? We don't wanna be creating a, a trench where, you know, cold moisture, potentially snow, things like that can sit, right? We only want them tickling the surface, moving debris out of the way when needed. And, and, and again, it just really helps that corn get up, get out of the ground, get going a lot quicker. So do you recommend growers actually pay attention to that as they're planting or just when they start planting? Because do conditions change when it comes to residue and, and getting it out of the way? Well, that's exactly it. And we go back to, you know, you're not going to be more than likely, you're not going to be planting all your acres on one even patch of ground. Uh, you know, you might have portions of the field where the previous year yields were higher. Um, and so those areas, there may be more trash or less trash, you know, tree rows, things like that. So making sure that we're consistently having a look and keeping our eyes on our trash whippers to make sure we get consistent, even emergence throughout that field. And especially when we move field to field, those things need to be checked. All right. Finally, I'm not sure this was on your list here, Alana, but fertility for silage corn, what should we be thinking about there? Yeah, absolutely. Fertility is a big one that we get questioned on a lot, you know, year to year. Um, Obviously, a lot of silage growers have access to manure. Um, and first and foremost, I recommend, you know, making sure you're utilizing those, you know, quote unquote, free resources uh, for you. So however many gallons that you can put on in the fall, obviously is ideal. You know, spreading manure in the spring for timing is, is not ideal. And as well, we don't have enough time to really get that full process that, you know, that breakdown of those nutrients in the soil. Um, so if we can spread manure at all, that's absolutely great. Aside from that, a healthy nitrogen plant um, is a must when we're growing corn, especially when we're growing silage corn. Um, you know, the old marker saying of when we equate things to bushels an acre for grain corn, it's about a pound of nitrogen per, you know, bushel acre of, of corn that we want to make. And you can use that multiple about four to six, you know, for every ton of silage that you want to, um, you know, take off, you need about, you know, four to six pounds of nitrogen on that field. And aside from that, if you have any availability to do anything starter on your planter, whether you do have liquid, whether you can band it, whatever the option is, using a starter fertilizer in Western Canada in soils that are not always ideal can really give you a, a step up for sure. All right. Thanks for your time and your insight, Alana. Absolutely. No, appreciate it.